module one that's the basic geometries and the geometry which we are going to consider here is a 90 degree elbow so uh, this is how a 90 degree elbow looks like uh, you this 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 geometry is uh, basically helps to connect two pipelines which are perpendicular to each other this helps ease the transition between two perpendicular pipelines helps to uh, helps to uh, remove any uh, unwanted turbulence in the flow when when flow comes from one pipeline to another perpendicular pipeline so this is a building block of many complex pipe systems that's why we have considered this geometry for this video so let's discuss the uh, blocking philosophy the the philosophy of blocking which we are going to adopt for this geometry so you see here this this is a what is called an l-shaped grid an l block that's the blocking philosophy which i'm trying to follow here an l-shaped block and uh, uh, the the edges on the on the ends these uh, these these edges will be associated with the face of this elbow they will capture the face of this elbow while the four vertices which you are going to see now on in red these four vertices actually there are eight of them because it's 3d figure these eight vertices will capture the curvature that's the blocking philosophy i repeat uh, an l-shaped grid with the end uh, faces being attached with these edges and the eight vertices trying to capture the curvature so let's start with the geometry so this is what the geometry looks like uh, i am uh, for uh, for speedier uh, tutorial i have uh, made the parts already so i will skip that uh, this is uh, this is the inlet this is this one is the outlet and this is the wall and the curves have been grouped together in a separate uh, separate part of their own as explained in the first video of this module so uh, uh, to reiterate the parts uh, are named because the parts have been created to uh, to help in the boundary uh, boundary condition uh, in icm in icm the boundary conditions can be applied only on a part they cannot be applied on a geometric entity if that geometric entity is not included in a part and for 3d we uh, we we uh, we in we try to make the parts of different surfaces because the in 3D, the boundary conditions are generally uh, applied on surfaces. So uh, we we initialize the blocking first. We go to blocking tab, create block, fluid. There is no part name called fluid, but once we enter a part name here, it will be part will be created automatically. And the 3D bounding box as usual, and no entity is selected because we want to select the whole geometry and apply. So this is uh, a part name fluid has been created here if you see here this part contains block it doesn't contain any geometric entity you can check here you can verify it by right clicking and say info it says that blocking info part contain one block that's it no meshes loaded no geometry in part fluid so it doesn't contain any geometry it doesn't contain any mesh it contains only the block right now so uh, as i explained the blocking philosophy so uh, i will go ahead and first create an l grid so let's go for a top view uh, i'm sorry the front view yeah this is the uh, front view the x y plane and z axis is perpendicular to the plane of the of the screen so let's uh, create an L grid first. You split block, you go to split block option, you check Put an edge here and make it just at the surface where it begins to show a curvature. Just at that point, you select and you press middle button of the mouse to verify the selection and press apply. So this block has been divided. 
Then you again press edge here and just here where it begins to show curvature or maybe just inside will fit. So you see an L block has been will be created once we delete this extra block. Now you see here we have not enabled delete permanently. Uh, if uh, when we uh, disable delete permanently, the block which we which we delete it goes into apply. It goes into V orphan part. So that block has gone into V orphan part, and we can reactivate it once uh, anytime we want, if we, if at all we want. Uh, if we delete permanently, that block will be removed from the memory of the of the ICM itself. It won't go into V orphan block. We generally avoid that. We generally they don't delete permanently any entity unless if there is a special case or something. So now we begin. Uh, as I explained, we will uh, we will associate these edges to the faces. Associate edge to a curve. Start the association here. Very flip. Let's start curves. Press apply. So the edges turn green. Green edges means they have been associated to a curve. Black edges means they are associated to a surface. So all the perimeter edges are automatically associated to the nearest surface. We don't need to do the association. To a surface if it is a perimeter edge of the block that's why you see all these black edges we didn't do any surface association for them they were automatically associated to the surface because they are on the perimeter of the block so we will associate this edge as well to the curve So the association is complete. We now need to project the vertices. Let's uh, switch on the display of vertices to see the projection. Now apply. So uh, the vertices have been projected on the surfaces or on the curves depending on their association the vertices which were associated to the curves have been have been projected to the curves while the surface associated vertices have been associated have been projected to the surface so let's see how the block looks like by yeah so this is how the block looks like so as i explained these four vertices actually eight vertices which are surface projected capture the curvature of the of the uh, geometry, the uh, the elbow. So uh, it's always better to have an L L grid which has the angle is less than 90. Let's ensure that the angle is less than 90. That helps ease out the trans transformation from a orthogonal mesh to a curved mesh here. So the 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 intention should always be to make the uh, the this angle less than 90. Right now it's more than 90. So let's move these vertices and make the angle a little bit less than 90. So you go to move vertex here in the blocking tab. And you select the first option and you select the vertices and you then move it here, move it here. Okay. So then you press the middle click. So it becomes a little bit less than 90 little bit more now the problem with movement of surface uh, projected vertices is that they might sometimes move out of the geometry as well so it's better when you whenever you move move a black vertex a surface projected vertex you it's better that you snap project the vertex after movement just just in case you know they moved out of the geometry or out of the surface we will just do this safety 
this is how the block looks like Uh, we might like to move this vertex a little here. More symmetry. And do again project vertex. It's okay. So uh, to uh, for our mesh parameter, let's go to part mesh setup and let's do let's say outlet is like three inlet is again three and wall is three height is like one 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 height ratio is like one point five or say one point two one point two So, uh, as I explained in the previous video, the, the mesh parameters are not really applied to the block now. To ensure that the mesh parameters are applied to the blocking file, you go to blocking, pre mesh params, and then here and update all. So, after you do apply, it will calculate the nodes and the type, type of the the cells, the quadrilateral or the hexa, into this mesh and say pre mesh. So we see here that the the uh, the first pre mesh is uh, with us. We we will see here that there are uh, very bad angle elements at the corners. At the four corners of this face, we have very uh, extremely bad angle elements. The same Thing holds in this face as well. The angles uh, near the four corners are very less. They are close to zero in fact. We can verify this claim by going to blocking and pre-mesh quality histogram and selecting the criteria of angle here and say apply. So we see a lot of, uh, a lot many elements below nine degree angle. There are like 47 elements which have angle less than 4.5 minimum is only 0 0.2709 degree angle and there are like uh, 232 elements which have angle between 0 and 9 so that's quite a lot actually and we can see where these elements are by going here and say switching back to wireframe and if we see here uh, the 0 and 4.5 angle they are the, the elements are close to the four corners Similarly, here the elements are very close to the corners. So the corner elements are a matter of concern which we will address uh, as you might have expected by making an O-grid. We did the same in the previous video lecture. We see a trend here that whenever you try to fit a Cartesian block to a curved geometry like a cylinder or an elbow, we will always get bad quality elements at the corner. A Cartesian block fitting to a curved geometry will lead to a black quality and ICM provides us of the method of O-grid to help tackle the bad quality elements in those areas. So we'll switch off the pre-mesh and go to blocking, create O-grid, select blocks, select all visible blocks. So the thing to note here that in blocking selection menu there is no option to select all objects. There is only an option to select all visible objects. Uh, this is because all objects, all the blocks, uh, there are some blocks in this orphan part as well. So if we had the option of selecting all the blocks, the blocks in the orphan part would also have been selected. To avoid that, ICM doesn't give you the option of selecting all the blocks at once. It only gives you the option of selecting all the visible blocks. And visible blocks here are the blocks in the active part. So we select all visible uh, objects, all visible blocks. And then select faces. And then say apply. And dismiss. So 
so and then uh, we we need to so we need to fix the edge and uh, the node distribution on the radial edges as well so we go to an edge specific node distribution unlike the part specific mesh distribution which we did earlier we go to edge specific node distribution blocking pre mesh parameters and edge select the edge here and uh, we see that copy parameters to all parallel edges switched on so all the parallel edges that is all the radial edges of the three O grids will be selected in one go and we increase the number of nodes to say 12 and we say apply so we go to pre mesh here and we see the mesh we can see a better representation yeah. So if we see here, the the uh, the angles have been washed vastly improved near the four corners, and we can verify this claim by going to pre mesh quality histogram angle apply. So there are no angle less than 18 degree, which is very good. The minimum angle is only 220 20 degree, 20.52 degrees, which is very acceptable uh, by most of the solvers. So this is our mesh ready for use now. So the mesh has been created and now uh, we, we need to output this mesh to a solver, uh, for example fluid, we, write, we need to write the input file for a fluid which can be read by a fluent, uh, ANSYS fluent, say. So uh, for ANSYS fluent to create an uh, input file for ANSYS fluent, ICM will need a uh, Two, two inputs, it will need the unstructured mesh, uh, the, don't go by the name unstructured, the mesh will be structured but ICM for some reasons calls it, uh, has an U dot .uns, the unstructured mesh extension to even a structured mesh. So uh, it will need a dot .uns file and it will also need a boundary condition file. So first we will create a dot .uns file, there are two ways to create a dot .uns file, the unstructured mesh file. You can go to pre-mesh and right click and you say convert to unstructured mesh and it will create a hex.uns file in your working diagram. Or you can go to file menu, you can go to mesh and you can say load from blocking and it will again create a hex.uns file in your uh, in your working directory. So uh, let's prefer this option because it's a little more accessible and it will say convert to unstructured mesh and it's, it's, it's uh, it created a hex.uns file in your working directory and it also loaded that mesh on the on the on on this project so you you can see a mesh mesh uh, tab has been uh, a mesh uh, tab has been created in this display tree so uh, the hex.uns file is created now we uh, we need to create a boundary condition file so first of all, we need to go to output mesh and select the solver, which is ANSYS Fluent, the default solver. And we say select apply. And then we go to BC, boundary conditions here. We see uh, here in the uh, boundary conditions window, which has popped up, uh, there are volumes, surfaces, edges, and mixed and unknown. So surfaces, uh, one-sided surfaces, that means they, they have mesh only on one side. And uh, uh, so there are like you see the, the three parts which we defined here are seen here inlet, outlet, and wall. So this is uh, 
this is because in icm cfd i am again uh, repeating that uh, uh, boundary conditions can be imposed only on parts so the three parts which we defined here are seen here apart from these three parts there are no surface parts so they are not seen here so we go to inlet and boundary conditions velocity inlet we have already created outlet boundary conditions pressure outlet i have already created wall boundary conditions wall boundary condition i have already created i mean it's easy to uh, create a boundary condition you go to create new you select a, 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 a new window pops up and you select the boundary condition which you want to create say velocity inlet and you say okay and it will come up but i have already done that for you to for faster uh, tutorial so uh, this is how the boundary condition is created and then you go uh, to edges but we don't have want to give any boundary condition to the edges so we skip that and we say accept so and then we write the uh, input so after the boundary conditions have been assigned to various parts we will now prepare the output file for ansys uh, to be used as an input to ansys fluent so you go to uh, write input save current project first yes it will save the current project as project 1 and then to create the output file uh, which is the input to ansys fluent it will need a uns file so uns file can be the file which we generated when we did pre mesh and convert to unstructured or you can it can be the uns file saved along with the project as well just now we saved as project 1 so we we can use either of them both are alike so we can say it's a project 1 open and it has already created an FBC file, which is nothing but the boundary condition file. So to create the input for ANSYS Fluent, the ANSYS ICM needs two files. One is the FBC file, which is being specified here, and one is the UNS file, which was specified just, just in the previous step. And we select grid dimension as 3D because this is a 3D mesh. And let's say we, we select the Fluent, uh, we name it as Fluent 2 and then say press done so there is already a flow in 2.msh we will overwrite it yes and then say yes so it's writing a flow in 2.msh file so you see that the uh, flow in 2.msh file has been created here in the working directory uh, this is the flow in 2.msh file you can read it into ansys fluent as a mesh file and to create this mesh file, the ICM used two inputs. One was the boundary condition file here, the uh, project1.fbc, this one, and then the hex.uns file, this one. So these are the two inputs it used to create the fluid2.msh file. Uh, that's all for this mesh creation. Thank you.